2016 retired race horse project horse and uh we were second in eventing and sixth in the freestyle last year and he's had a lighter year as far as competitions go because we've been dealing with a pelvis issue um that he had when he came off the track it's it's taken a while i backed down and um worked on really building up the strength in his hind end and over his top line. So I've done a lot of lunge work. He's done a fair amount of hill work. And then we get to do kind of both our favorite thing, and that's playing Liberty. And you see my Jack Russell right there. Ty Ty was kind of egging him on, and so he did his uh, best impression of his racehorse days. But if I give him the time and kind of let him blow off the steam, he always comes back to me. In the beginning, I obviously I start in a smaller arena or a smaller round pen and really get them kind of hooked on to you. He has always been pretty good about being hooked on to me. And so it's kind of allowed me to push certain envelopes. This arena uh, is kind of lacking in gates. So uh, you can see that I trust him a fair amount. And he does a really good job for me when I ask him to go jump over the jump. And he comes right back to me. Uh, I do use a kind of a combination of pressure and release and then also reward uh, with treats to help engage the brain. Um, and also things that they really enjoy doing. So, for instance, he loves to chase things. He chases horses. He'll chase me. He'll chase his tarp. Uh, and I think sometimes in... Working with these guys, it's kind of optimizing the things that they're good at instead of focusing on their weaknesses so much. I find that if I focus on the things that they enjoy doing, um, and then I can kind of go around to the back door and get the weaknesses stronger that way. So uh, doing a lot of this liberty work, and then like I said before, the lunge work, and exercises like this, getting him to work on leg yields and getting him to cross over with the hind and really getting him to stretch. You know, those are good exercises every day to get your horses to do. Uh, and he's just a very highly intel intelligent horse. So I do have to keep kind of on my toes with them. And here, I've taught him the steps of the Spanish walk. You see, I, I say the words and then I suggest with the stick. And then his favorite game is to uh, come running to me. So, again, those are kind of like his rewards, even, in play. And um, I've been really excited with how he's changed through his body. We're coming up on uh, two years in December, and I, I think it takes some of these guys longer to really develop the muscling and the strength. And then their personalities come out as well and he, let me tell you he's got a personality um not only do i like to work in the arena but i i do practice it kind of everywhere um with the liberty as much as i can um but he's been a very fun horse and i'm excited for 2018 things that I use. I use the Cadence Ultra, which is kind of uh, my base feed for most of my horses. And then we have Grow and Win and Ultimate Finish. And um, those work really well for a combination of reasons. Uh, if you have an easy keeper, you can just use uh, the Grow and Win, like for instance, Fledge, very easy keeper. So he just gets eight ounces of the Grow and Win. Um, for your height maintenance thoroughbreds, 
like Johnny. Um, and then my RRP horses that tend to come in uh, fairly underweight. I like to use the cadence and then also the grow and win as a um, additional feed and also the ultimate finish, which is a fat supplement. Uh, and that tends to work really well with not having to give them so much concentrate, but you're, you're giving a good bang for your buck according to how the horse responds to um, the way you're feeding if it's if it's holding weight if it's building muscle all those things we kind of take into consideration if they're getting too fat and you kind of have to change or for instance if you have an, a horse that's stalled and needs to be on stall rest um, I tend to take the cadence ultra out and they just have the grow and win and then hay 24 7 so I really really like it it's really adjustable and it, it works really well for a combination of different types of horses um, and you can be really efficient with it. So that's Buckeye feeds are pretty awesome that way. Um, moving on to a couple of the supplements. I try, I like to try to keep things pretty simple. Um, one of the biggest things I learned from coming back from badminton um, and Johnny's lack of performance, we did further testing. And in the beginning we did, we pull the blood panels and all that stuff and his electrolytes looked fine. But when we dug a little deeper, uh, we were able to notice when we did a urine analysis that he was really lacking in magnesium. And that's really a big deal because magnesium is an important electrolyte um, for the use of the muscles, and including the heart and all that stuff. So uh, his magnesium level was 2%, which the normal range was around 17 to 30%, I believe is what they wanted. So... Um, he was going to get a recheck in 30 days, and I talked to my good friends, uh, Jen and John Holling. They gave me a good recommendation for uh, magnesium, which is called Hypona Magvet, and um, I really liked it. Um, I was allowed to try it. I got a couple of scoops just to see if Johnny would even eat it. Um, he is very picky, and uh, he's a kind of a sensitive horse to things that you put into his feed. So. Uh, I was a little concerned because it was very powdery, but that's really important because of how it's mined and how finely it's grounded. So it's actually way more absorbable. And he gobbled it right up. And after he started being on the magnesium, I noticed a big difference in his appetite. Um, he started to really gain weight. So then when we went to our 30 day checkup, his magnesium went from 2% to 27%, so he was well within the normal range. He had gained about 70 pounds, which it's fairly typical for them to gain or to lose weight when they're traveling overseas and such. Um, but it was really positive that he was responding so well to it. And you know, Johnny is a fairly hot horse, high energy horse, so oftentimes people think well, you have a, high, uh, a hot horse, so feed it magnesium because it's a calming agent. Well, it's, that's kind of a side effect of magnesium. So magnesium works in helping the muscles recover and um, they're not having to be overstrained. So in horses, when you're able to get them more comfortable in their body, you get the benefit of the brain starting to relax. Uh, and so not only does it help hot natured horses in that respect, but also your slower type horses that may seem a little dull. Um, I've also noticed in horses that I've had back soreness that the magnesium, I'll put them on magnesium and then that kind of goes away. So uh, I've really been really happy with how the mag has been working and the horses eat it really well. After I had uh, tried Hypona and I noticed the really good benefits of it with Johnny, I reached out to Sabrina at Hypona. Um, and I'm really excited to say that they've um, sponsoring us with the MagVet. And I'm really excited because it works so well on all different types of my horses. So it really benefits in my program and it, it's uh, been great. And I look forward to Johnny kind of coming out next spring. And um, this is really beneficial for his program. Yeah, he, 
No, that's the first time he's ever laid for me. He's been asking for it though. Good. Oh my goodness, you're a mess.